When so many people in this world are dealing with so much stress from so many different environments, from their jobs, their careers, from financial world that we're a part of today, the, the worldwide economic downturn, and then all the normal challenges that you face if you have a family and you're working hard and you're raising children. And so I wanted to do a show where you could take a couple that at first glance you'd know who the bad person was. And you know, most of us tend to make those kinds of judgments, but as we got deeper, you begin to see that again, no matter how thin you slice it, there's always two sides and you see that good people can make bad decisions and really harm themselves and harm other people. But the good news is you can change those decisions and change your life in a heartbeat. People often will say it took me 20 years to, you know, change my life or 10 years to change my life. But you change your life in a moment. The moment you get the truth clear in your mind, the moment you get clear about what's most important to you and the moment you make a decision and act on it. And that's what the show is really about. So, I put the show together and worked with this couple because of a couple reasons. Number one, there are, you know, five kids involved here, five boys that desperately need parents and neither one is really there at this time. They were both caught up in their own pain. And how many families do we see like this? It's so easy to point the finger at other people, but when we get overwhelmed, when we get overloaded, we forget about the impact we're having on other people very often that we care about the most. Or we know it, but we feel like we're powerless to change it. And so these kids, I wanted to make sure we made a support system for by getting these parents back together. I also saw that there are two people here that really loved each other, but were just hurting each other. And unfortunately, that's too common as well. And I thought if we could look through the lens of how to heal a relationship like this, if it was possible to heal, I didn't know for sure if it could be, then we'd be opening a door for many people to ask some new questions, to reevaluate their own relationships, and to maybe put some things back together in their own lives. But I also picked this couple because they were a perfect metaphor for what we're seeing more and more in the culture we live in today, which is what we think is most important, even when we achieve it, doesn't fulfill us. Um, there are many human needs, and one of the human needs that we all have is to feel significant, to feel unique, to feel special, to feel important. And it's a need we all have. Some people get that need by knowing more about baseball than anybody else. Some people get that sense of significance by trying to control everybody else. Uh, some people get that need of significance met by working harder than other people, some by being more generous, some by wearing, you know, special makeup or dressing in a unique way or having earrings every location you want to imagine or don't want to imagine. Um, so there's lots of ways to feel unique and special, and it's a need. Everybody's got it. Some people do it through their religion. But when we make that need first, when we make our own sense of significance first above everything else, there's such a vicious price to be paid. And yet we don't know this as a culture today. In fact, if you go to a place like India and you ask people there, young people, high school students, what do you want to be when you grow up? The number one answer that you'll hear is a software engineer. Because in India, the number one thing to do is to become successful, to educate yourself. You work hard, you educate yourself, and then you work in an industry that's growing, and software obviously is growing, and you're paid well, and then you can help take care of your family and your friends, and that's the way in which your life has meaning. And that's not true for everyone universally, but it's the largest metaphor. In the United States, and I can't remember if it was USA Today or uh, ABC News, I think it may have been a poll where they both worked together. They did a poll only about six months ago, and they asked high school students in the United States, what do you want to be when you grow up? And what do you think they said? Famous. Now, famous just means I want to be significant, I want to be unique, I want to be special, I want to be important. But today, you can become famous by being infamous. Today you can be famous by, you know, creating enough problems, by being stupid enough. Some of the role models that we have today, so most of the role models in the media at least, very often for young people are people that are constantly getting themselves in trouble and then getting acknowledged for it, being rewarded for it, being paid, you know, a million dollars for your story when you're going in from drug rehab before you even go in, in the case of somebody like Lindsay Lohan. So I'm not knocking those celebrities, those individuals. I'm just saying as long as we think that if we become special enough in some way, that we're going to be happy, we'll always be disappointed. I know that because I've had the privilege now of working with, at this stage, four million people from a hundred countries. And anyone who pursues significance first above love, above family, above contribution, above something outside yourself, is always disappointed because it's never enough. When you get to what you think is so significant, it's not enough. It's not enough acknowledgement, it's not enough money, or you get acknowledged, but it doesn't feel good anymore because you feel like people want something from you. So why do I tell you all this and bring all this up in the behind the scenes of this story? Because Melissa Lawson had five boys, five boys I know she loved and felt deep, deep commitment to. 
And yet that commitment seemed to disappear as she entered a culture where people think of a woman who works at home as a housewife as being worthless. Other women give that impression. And we allow the culture to start to control us, to start to make us decide what's important, what's not important. And when that happens, you're going to have the same problems everybody else in the culture has. And would you say most people in our culture are happy, fulfilled, have a deep sense of meaning, love their work or mission, are physically fit and strong, have passionate, healthy relationships? Eh. The answer would be no. Not for the majority of people. So if you act like everybody else, if you pursue what everybody else pursues, you're going to have a problem. That's not to say this woman shouldn't have the right to pursue her, pursue her music, but she was doing it in a way that was destroying her own boys and destroying her intimate relationship with her husband, and frankly, I believe, destroying herself. On the other hand, it's always two-sided, right? I knew that underneath this, for her to be there, this man, Rick, her husband, must have some real challenges, too, that haven't shown up. And when I first heard about this, and I heard that, you know, while she was off doing this show, that he had an affair, I just want, you know, my number one thing is I need to take him and rip him open, right? Teach this guy a lesson. I mean, I understand people do this all the time. I understand this their needs, but... He can't have some justification for that. He's got to own this. He's got to turn this around. But as I dug in, and I've got the story behind the story, that really Melissa left the boys, he supported it, to go on the show. But then the show said, hey, you can't talk to your family for three months. And she agreed. Now, you and I both know that, you know, you don't have to tell your kids whether you won or lost, but you've got to talk to your kids. You can't talk to your kids for three months when they're, you know, from seven years old down to two. And the fact that she did that and then talked to her husband said to me, wow, I got to deal with Rick and I got to deal with Melissa here. This is going to be a, a complex task and hopefully one that the viewer back home can take a look at and find somebody in your family you can relate to. Rick clearly is a guy that was very weak. He was hoping Melissa would just take him for a ride and get him rich and happy. He certainly loves her, but he wanted her to do all the work. And he's piddling off doing things like being on Facebook. On the other hand, Melissa's leaving the kids just assuming they'll be fine with their father who really doesn't have the skills to take care of them. And she's off pursuing her dream, and the kids are the ones suffering. So if you judge these people, you can't help them. That's the one thing I've learned over the years is to help people, you got to get the story behind the story. you got to dig underneath and see what's going really going on. And I know it's not Melissa is uncaring. I knew it's that Melissa doesn't feel like she's enough, which is a common thing most human beings have. So how do we tackle this? Well, I tackled it by saying we got to get to the truth. i got to get them out of the environment where they are, separate them from the kids by themselves first, take them to some place new, which we brought them here to Malibu, sat down, and let's get underneath it. And as we get underneath it, we got to get them to see the truth. i got to get him to see that he's been trying to live off his wife, and he's basically undisciplined and been lazy. That's not who he is, but that's how Rick's been behaving. And i got to her to see that you've been making everything about yourself more important than your children. Is that audience really clapping? Is that the same as your children saying, Mommy, I love you? or the need that your kids have for it. And if you watch the clips, you know, in the show it ends up being, you know, 10 seconds. All you see me basically saying is, I want to slap you too, both of you. <laughs> but if you get underneath it, you'll see we spent two hours. And I think on the site here, if you click, you'll see, if you want, more of that therapeutic intervention, and you'll see how the breakthroughs actually happen because they made some huge breakthroughs right away, right out of the, out of the jumping blocks, so to speak, starting blocks. Now, what do we do next? I got to make sure they're both committed. Once I get Rick to see that Melissa really does need him, once I get Melissa to see she needs to be there for her children, she can see where she was selfish, he can see where they're selfish, now there's an opening. But that opening is going to close back up unless I get them to commit and do some things to change their life. So very quickly, i got to do something physical, I want to do something to test them, and it doesn't show up in the show because of time, and so I wanted something that would make them face fear. So we were already working with Red Bull, and I asked them, what do you have that would just push people to the edge? And they said, well, you know, Tony, you're a helicopter pilot, and you know what it's like to, to do some stunts in helicopters. It's impossible to do a 360 in a helicopter. The G-force is intense, and it would rip the helicopter apart. But they, we said, there's one helicopter in the world, we own it. It's an experimental helicopter, and one pilot in the world who can do this. And he, they said, it's the wildest, most intense ride you could possibly imagine. I said, I want that. The problem is, the day we went to go shoot, there was a big fire, the sky was filled with smoke, which made it even more dangerous, the time was running out, and so only one of the two could actually make this trip, whether it was going to be, you know, the situation that Melissa would take on, or whether it was going to be the situation that now Rick would take on was the big question, and I knew Rick was scared, and I needed Rick to become a man again, and fortunately, I said, one of you's got to decide where to go, and Rick didn't hesitate, and he stepped up. After that intervention, he understood he had to step up at a different level. He went on this wild ride, 
And Melissa was blown away. She was so surprised. Again, it created what we call polarity, where she started to like respect him, like, look at him, man. He's got <laughs> cojones on him again. He's making stuff happen. And so that night when I brought to them their next challenge, I mean, again, it was cut out of the show, but it was like I, I had to pull them apart and go, look, this is a G-rated show. I mean, there was an energy between them, which was really beautiful. Then I get in the task that you saw on the air. We sent them on that family trip to the Enchanted Ranch. And I'm not going to recap that. You should have seen the show by now. I'm sure you've got a sense of what that was like. But while they were there, I needed Rick to understand that there was nothing wrong with his boys except the fact that he wasn't present for them. I don't mean present like showing up in the living room. I mean present like with them. And so there was the first moment when I came and all the kids were talking, the cameras were trying to shoot, and they were all yelling, making noise. And I just took each boy one at a time and looked them right in the eye with presence and talked to them and let them know you get to be a kid again. Your dad and mom are here. And Rick saw that and it was a shift for him that was really wonderful. The next day he went out and took care of the kids. The next day after that, everything shifted for him. He said this kids had become his priority and you could see it in him. He saw he could make a difference. He saw his kids weren't out of control. They just didn't have the presence of a father. And once he got that, that was an awakening. What's a breakthrough? It's a moment in time when you see the truth. It's a moment in time when you stop lying to yourself. It's a moment in time when you see that truth and you act on it. And Rick, you know, to his credit, really did do this. Now, the most important part of the whole process was working with the family. Because we went back to their home and I got to see how the Lawsons had been managing their family, so to speak, and it was disastrous. So we brought all the family together, the family, the kids, the friends, and found out that, you know, Rick had been in a position where he'd lost his business previously and people in his church had given him money to do a roof. He's in the roofing business and he never followed through. Their house was still leaking and he took the money they paid them and paid other bills of his. He just wasn't being responsible. So I had to work on Rick very intensely. And I brought in for Rick to turn him around. I said, you can't expect Melissa to take care of these kids if you don't become an incredible provider. And so I brought in my partner, Chet Holmes. And we're in a business where we, what's called business breakthroughs, and we turn businesses around. I've been doing it for 30 years. Chet's been doing it for an equal amount of time. And we've done big companies, small companies. And I said, Chet, you're going to come in here, and I really want you to work with him and train him and show him how he can add value in the industry he was in. And so he got an opportunity to go to work for a company called Simon Roofing. And Simon Roofing is one of the largest commercial roofing companies in the world. And they have a very special approach to making sure that they provide the needs for their customers different than anybody else. So we took him out, got him in a suit, got him out there working out, got him losing weight, got him going doing his presentations. None of this you see in the show because we only have 44 minutes. So we had to focus only on the breakthroughs that happened really with Melissa. But Rick had huge breakthroughs. In fact, at the end of the show, what's cut out, uh, the people from Simon Roofing gave him a job and he's gone to work for that company and he was able to make enough in that job to be able to keep them from losing their house and start turning their finances around. And the final part of kind of the story behind the story that I really want to point out to you and I'll wrap up here is if this is a story about getting to the truth, if this is a story about valuing what's most important in your life, then I had to get Melissa to not just verbally say that her kids were the most important thing. I had to get her to commit in a way where those boys would know for the rest of their life that they were the most important thing on, on earth. If she didn't do that, if she kept going for her music, even though she has a true gift, I mean, the argument would say God gave her this incredible voice, but he also gave her these five boys. So I needed to make sure that she drew a line in the sand and she really separated from her ego needs and focused on her children. And so I went for the gamble, and even my producers, my partners were saying, Tony, I don't know if this is going to work. And I sat her down and said, you say your kids are first, I want you to not work for 18 months on songs. You can write songs, you can sing, you can do it in your church, but not for money, not to promote your career. And watching her go through that experience was like the death of the ego, and the interactions between she and I were pretty intense. Um, meanwhile, I'm keeping all the family involved during this, and one of the things you won't see in the show, but you will see here, is that Melissa had a brother there, and her brother has been caught up in drugs for a very long time, and I can hear the cameraman in the background going, keep the camera off the brother, <laughs> just like, because what was happening was, he was high as a kite, you know, and when I looked, when I looked into his eyes, I saw somebody clearly has used meth, and he was kind of shaking, and his whole belief was that his brain was fried, and so my poor crew, this is the story behind the story really. My poor crew, NBC has been incredible with me. They would normally walk in and want to do a 20 minute segment because it's not going to show up on TV in much detail. Me, I want to change these people's lives. So my, my 
co-producer Tom Foreman who created Extreme Home Makeover. I can hear him telling the guys, you won't be able to stop Tony. He's not going to go until he changes all their lives. We, he's not going to just get a clip out of this. And so after we've gone for about three hours with the whole family and everybody's transforming and Melissa's made shifts, everyone's making shifts, I look here and I see this young boy, this young man in the middle, and I can see he has no relationship with his parents where they, don't, you know, they just see him today as broken. And even his sister not seeing for who he is. And I thought, you know what, i got to help this young man. And unbeknownst to me, the camera guys are holding this on their shoulders, these big heavy cameras for hours and hours. People are booked to fly out on planes. I haven't finished the final task. If I don't give them the task and we don't film it, the whole thing falls apart, the whole shoot. Pete, we can't be here the next day to shoot. And time is ticking off. And meanwhile, I turned to this young man. I said, I know this will probably, my crew's going to kill me. And this will never probably show up in a million years on television, but I got to help you because I can. And I turned to him and I start to kind of pierce him with presence and understanding what's really going on. And if you're really interested, if you know anybody who's on drugs, if you know anybody that you think really can't change, or they're just not aware of what's really going on in their life, it's, worth, it's a clip worth looking at for a few minutes. I hope you'll check it out. Because within a few moments, I get him where this kid is kind of shaking and thinking, you know, his brain is fried, is totally clear. And I get his father and mother to see him in a totally new way, and his sister as well. And you can see him coming back to life. And it would have been a wonderful piece to put in the show, but unfortunately, 44 minutes, and it takes you off on a whole other story. But we have it here for you to take a look at the clip just to see what's possible. I hope you'll check it out. Um, but in the end... Melissa, to her credit, you know, the transformation that occurs is she's mad, she's angry, but she makes the shift. She really commits to being a mom. Meanwhile, I've got a plan. If she really commits, I'm not going to hold her 18 months. I'm going to give her a new opportunity, but she doesn't know that. I finally call and I give them this task to sing, you know, to write a song together, which means these two who are very strong in their own right got to really come together, and they got to come up with a song that's a message for what they got out of this journey. And when they arrive in L.A. on two days' notice, they sing this amazing song, United We Stand. I was doing everything not to cry because it was the message I wanted to give them from the very beginning, that all the problems that we have in our lives, the problems with the kids, the problems economically, the problems in a relationship are because we've divided ourselves. Oftentimes we've divided within ourselves what we should and shouldn't be like. But we certainly divide with our partners in life. And the song's words uh, just expressed what everything was really about. It was really, really beautiful. And... In the end, as if you saw the show, you know, Melissa then discovered that now that she doesn't, you know, need to commit this way, now that she knows what's most important is her kids and she's living that way, she's given opportunity to have a record contract. And I'm happy to tell you that here's what Melissa's doing today. The update is Rick has become a real man for his kids. Um, Melissa will tell you straight. He's absolutely incredibly strong and present in his incredible experience. In fact, uh, Melissa and Rick went back to the uh, Enchanted Ranch, and they're there with the man who created that ranch there that you saw on the show. And he said, are these the same kids? And he's kind of like Wyatt Earp. If you saw the show, you know he's not in any form of exaggeration. The kids are so different because Rick's so different. And he's working hard. But meanwhile, Melissa, the change in her is just, I couldn't be more grateful. It's been a year. And here's a woman that, you know, has, her kids are number one no matter what. She's finding a way to take care of five boys, figure out how to manage everything simultaneously, take care of the house, take care of this, have her career. And a, a telling sign was they had a July 4th concert for 30,000 people, and Melissa's going to be one of the headliners. It's in Texas. And she's going to go beyond that. Normally, for two or three days, she would just shut off and not talk to anybody turn off from her kids. And this time, she was with the kids the whole time. They rented an RV. They had the RV right there besides the stage. So she was with her kids the whole time. She invited the kids on stage, and she was present with them while she put on this incredible concert. Uh, another element I thought was really uh, telling about how much she's changed was uh, she had an opportunity with Sony Red to go on concert tour with them and potentially have them be her label. They could do some amazing things for her career. They're a great label. And the man said, look, you know, I can't hear any complaints about you. I heard you complain about maybe going on the road, being apart from your kids and your family. He said, that's not going to work here. And she said, you know what, I really, the offering you're giving me is amazing, but my kids do come first. And I have another way to do a record contract that's not as dramatic or as exciting, but it allows me to take care of my family first. And she's chosen that. So she's working with Ray, the man you saw on the show, and she's coming out with the album, uh, with an album, but she's coming out right away with a song, and if you click on the next button, or maybe it'll come on right after I'm done here, you'll hear the full song of United We Stand, and uh, if, it, if the spirit of it touches you, go to iTunes and get it. Um, we have no connection to this, but uh, we have a connection to the hearts of these people, and they're, they're doing well, they're growing, they're expanding, 
And Melissa, I think, has shown every woman in America there's nothing more important than your children, not even your career, and there's a way to have it all. Um, but you got to keep your priorities straight if you're going to be happy. And you got a couple here that I'm sure will have their ups and downs, as all couples do, but there's a deep love for each other. There's no divorce a part of this life. These kids have two parents that are there for them. And I think, you know, Rick and Melissa have really shown us how much life can change if you get your priorities straight. And we all have to decide what those priorities are. So that's the story behind the story. If the show touches you, uh, please pass this on. There's some links here you can send, or if you haven't seen the show and you just heard the whole story, go watch it on Hulu. Uh, and once again, you can see what's happening with the two of them by clicking on the next click button nearby. And I really encourage you to see uh, the intervention that was done with her brother so you get a sense of just how you can get people present within a few moments. Thanks for watching. Live strong and live with passion.